Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q4 and FY24 earnings conference call of Supriya Life Science Limited. As a reminder, all participants lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchdown phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Irfan Rain from Orient Capital. Thank you. Thank you. And over to you, sir. Thank you, Nia. Uh, good morning, everyone. On behalf of Sophia Lines Life Science Limited, I extend a very warm welcome to all participants. Uh, before we begin the call, I would like to give a short disclaimer. This call may contain some of the forward-looking statements, which are completely based upon our belief, expectation as of today. These statements are not guarantee of our future performance and involve un unposted risk and uncertainties. With this, I would like to hand over the call to uh, Shashit sir uh, for his opening remark. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Good morning and warm welcome to all the participants. Thank you for joining us today to discuss the Q4 financial year 24 results of Supriya Life Science Limited. To take us through the results and answers to your question, along me are Dr. Saloni Vag, old time director, Mr. Krishna Raghunathan, chief financial officer, and our investor relations department. Oriental Capital. I hope everyone got the opportunity to go through the financial results and investor presentation which have been uploaded on the stock exchanges as well as the company website. It gives me an immense pleasure to announce that the company has achieved a revenue of 570 crore which is a 24% growth as compared to the previous year while maintaining a healthy EBITDA margin of 30%. This achievement is a testament to the successful execution of our long-term and sustainable strategy, which includes penetration and focus of the company on more regulated markets, widening our product basket in regulated markets, widening our portfolio by introducing new molecules and therapies, B, Integrating production, manpower, and the latest technology. C. Enhancing operational efficiency and superior cost management. D. Implementing backward integration to extend our chain, value chain, and secure more regulatory registrations. Focusing on R&D investments and ensuring supply chain stability. The company continued to deepen investments in systems risk understanding, alternative markets, and responsiveness. During the year, the company enhanced its presence in regulated markets, resulting in a large share of revenue contribution from the European region, increasing from 31% in financial year 23 to 41% in financial year 24. This shift is significant as margins in the regulated markets are higher as compared to semi-regulated markets. The company has created a pipeline of a new product extending beyond its long-standing competence in anti-histamines to include anti-diabetics, anesthetics, etc. and other therapeutic areas. These products will be launched by quarter 3 financial year 25. We intend to build our contract Development and Manufacturing Organization, CDMO, Business Portfolio. Our strategy number not will be ready by quarter two, financial year 25, where we will be further expanding our CMO and CDMO activities. This year, we are very pleased to announce that we have proposed 40% dividend as against of 30% last year for all our esteemed shareholders. This, with this, I hand over the call to our CFO, Mr. Krishna Gunathan, to share quarter four financial year 24 financial highlights with you all. Over to you, Mr. Krishna. Thank you, sir. Hello, everyone, and good morning. I will now share the operational performance of the quarter 
and following which we will open the floor for question and answers. The company reported revenue from operations of INR 158 crores in Q4 FI24 as against INR 140 crores in Q3 FI24, plus registering a growth of 13% quarter on quarter. EBITDA in Q4 FI24 stood at INR 56 crores as against INR 41 crores in Q3 FI24, and EBITDA margin stood at 35% for Q4 FI24 as against 29% in Q3 FI24. Profit before tax was INR 53 crores for uh, Q4 FI24 as against INR 40 crores uh, in Q3 FI24. And the growth is around 33%. Patch stood at INR 36 crores in Q4 FI24 as against INR 30 crores in Q3 FI24. Patch margin stood at 23% uh, compared with 21% in Q3 FI24. Moving to full year performance, uh, Revenue from operations of INR 570 crores in FI24 as against INR 461 crores in FI23, we reported a growth of around 24% compared with FI23. EBITDA in FI24 stood at INR 173 crores as against 129 crores in FI23, and EBITDA margin stood at 30% for FI24 as against 58% in FI23. Profit was at INR 166 crores for FI24 as against INR 150 crores for FI23, leading a growth of 30%. Patch stood at INR 119 crores in FI24 as against INR 90 crores in FI23. Patch margins stood at 21%. We have improved our working capital days from 235 days to 124 days. This is mainly due to reduction in overall inventory days from 233 to 165. There has been a slight increase in data days uh, due to higher sales during this quarter end, uh, which would even out. Uh, on borrowings, we would like to report that for the last six months, we have not utilized any working capital limits except for uh, letter of credits and bank guarantees. Now, we can open the floor for questions and answers. Thanks to all of you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If, to, if you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Raghav Agarwal from Vidhi, Vridhi Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Good morning, everybody. Congratulations, sir, for the great set of numbers. I just had a question regarding the Brazil orders and the Brazil approvals that you were talking about last time. You had mentioned that you had got some approvals from there. Can you throw some light on that? Brazil, okay. Uh, yes, uh, we have, uh, so we had our Envisa audit uh, from the Brazilian authority in the month of January and we have cleared that audit with zero observation. Uh, so it is a big step for us because recently uh, the authority had opened up the portal because most of their current sources are from China. So they are looking at replacement sources and they had opened up this portal wherein if you can get the products registered, and you can get the site audited and approved, then you will become the first source for those products and all the local companies would have to buy those products from you. So we have actually taken great advantage of this situation. We got the audit done. Like I said, we cleared the audit with zero observations. And as of now, we have already registered about 10 products with Cadifa. Around 8 additional products are currently under registration. So by end of this year, we will have about 17 to 18 products registered with uh, the authority. This actually opens up a very big market for us because for our existing products also, the market in Brazil is growing. Plus the new products, what we are introducing in the basket for those also, the Brazilian market is quite large. Our anticipation is that in the next three years, uh, because of this registration uh, in Brazil, at least 200 odd crores we will be able to add to our top line. Uh, so this is just uh, some light on the registrations and why we have aggressively pursued this. Thank you so much, ma'am, for that answer. I also wanted to understand the 
the DMS project, how is that going on? And you had also mentioned that there is a possibility of getting similar orders like the the European DMS order that we received. Like, can you also talk about that? Uh, if I'm not wrong, you're asking about DSM, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. So, uh, yes, uh, it is one of our, as you are uh, aware that in the last couple of quarters, we have really focused on expanding our CMO, CDMO uh, kind of opportunities. And DSM is one such uh, long uh, contract that we have got. We are the exclusive suppliers for vitamin B2 uh, for them. Initially, they were manufacturing this product, but in the last few quarters, they have completely suspended their production. And now we will be their sole supplier uh, going forward globally for this product. Uh, the project is moving really well. We have already started commercial supply for food grade material. And the CEP, USDMF and the Japan DMF are currently under uh, filing. So once that is done, even the pharma uh, you know, business we will start getting. Uh, for FI25, we are anticipating at least 25 to 30 tons of uh, you know, material uh, from the DSM contract. And we definitely have a lot of other similar contracts in the pipeline where we have some assured business of advanced intermediates as well as APIs, uh, which will you will see that some of them will start commercializing in FI25, maybe uh, the second half of FI25. But there are a lot of other opportunities on the same line. That came from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya from MSA Capital Partners. Please go ahead. Hello. Am I audible? Yes. Thank you so much uh, uh, for the opportunity. So just wanted to quickly understand a few things. So uh, what what would be the overall thought process of the management when we are when we are coming out with new molecules? What is the size of molecules that we look at? What are the margins that we look at while when when doing R and D? If you can just Give me a quick uh, color on this. See, we uh, focus on the molecules. Normally, if you see, you know, many products are we depending upon China. So our intention is that the therapeutic category uh, products which we select, we have our in-house complete backward integration, and then we launch. And we normally see a sizable amount of tonnage and business. We therefore have already uh, increased our capacity of one the plant which is going into operation. Validation is going on now. That is 370 KLD. So you can understand we already have next three years future considering the capacity is 1020 KLD. And many uh, countries today I have seen are very keen to buy from India than China. So we mostly focus on that because we are in exports for almost more than 38 years. And you have seen our ratio is 80% and above. So our meetings, which we meet to the customer, customer has intention to expand the business with Supriya Life Science because of the regulatory support and many other options which we give to our customers. Understood, understood. Thank you so much for the answer, sir. Sir, uh, also when from from introduction, that is when when we developed the product and we have launched it in the market, how fast uh, in your experience, how fast uh, does a molecule scale up? And uh, for example, what would be the revenue percentage of the molecules that you had inter in introduced two years back? As Part of our as a part of our revenues today. So usually it takes uh, around two to three years for any molecule to scale up significantly because uh, it takes anywhere between twelve to eighteen months for getting different kind of regulatory approval. About six to nine months for us to actually launch the product and you know get the validation uh, completed and start the commercial production. But in regulated markets, uh, twelve to eighteen months to register the product. So for you to see a sizable uh, sort of, you know, contribution from a particular new product uh, to our top line, uh, minimum two years are required. Uh, in semi-regulated markets, this time is slightly shorter. 
uh, you can see that in semi regulated markets between 12 to 18 months as soon as the commercial launch of the product happens uh, we can start applying some quantity but the better margins and the higher revenues come when the product goes into the more regulated market and if if you just to quantify the product that we had launched 2 years back or 3 years back if you have the number with ready with you what would be the contribution from those products today uh so uh, not exactly we are not able to quantify that exact number but what has also happened is uh, in the last couple of uh, years we have actually worked on our existing products because if you look at our revenues in the last 2 3 years also uh, we were not present for a lot of our existing products in the regulated market space so last 2 3 years our main focus was capacity enhancement and then catering for existing products the regulated market which we were entering and that is also reflected in the numbers most of the major new product launches will start happening from this financial year because this year we are planning to launch almost 4 to 5 new products so now you will see more and significant contribution from the new product launches and also the strategy of the company na as you were asking you know normally any development api takes 2 to 2 and 1/2 years absolutely but we have so. decided yeah but we have decided after meeting the customers because you know our customer base is 1700 uh, customers currently present in 128 cust- uh, countries you can see and analyze that this is the big basket we have decided to catch hold of big companies where we will not be selling the api but validated drug master files for the n minus 1 intermediate will give them and today the demand is from them that they doesn't want to go to china but they need n minus 1 intermediate where volumes are there so such type of products we are already talking with three four customers who are using in a very big way there if you get your interest you get your um, margins we are very happy so we will not be fighting for api but we will see that we consume our entire capacity for n minus 1 intermediates and move ahead first and the second you must under last that we are a debt free company that is our strong presence we have cash in our hand we don't borrow anything as of date uh, today you see the balance sheet we don't have any limits utilized by us that's the strong hold of the company principles and integrity no so there is no doubt that you paid a phenomenal business just, just trying to get a better sense for myself and handle on the company uh, so that's why we please quality qualitative questions that i'm trying to get a sense of so when so so and ma'am when when we look at uh, our sales cycle if you can and and how long would it be what would be the uh, process and, and in terms of wallet share do we monitor our wallet share in terms of our clients api spends and what would who what would be the quantum of competition within that wallet share uh so as far as competition is concerned in most of the products that we manufacture uh i wouldn't say that we have a comparable competitor only because we are present mainly in the very regulated markets where we are supporting our customers not only with the complete regulatory compliance but for most of these products we have a completely backward integrated product uh, so in terms of supply in terms of the best uh, cost uh, in terms of even the quality of the product itself uh, we are i feel in most of our products because you know that for a uh, majority of the products which almost contribute to about 75% of our revenue we are fully backward integrated so for those products at least we don't see that there is a comparable uh, competitor and with the customer also we are their first approved source uh, so more than 80 90% of their uh, demand we are catering currently and sir one thing i would like to uh, uh, highlight yes sir this is a regulated pharmaceutical industry it's not a grocery market of competitions let's understand that competition you can create and you can lose you can become npa and get out of the business that's the story in india you must understand that this is not possible in a regulated uh, industry 
regulated things are discussed the buyer should be confident to work with you that confidence has to be created because today somebody comes gives x price y price and just takes the business we have seen what is the fate of the business today so business is always there on your integrity quality and your sustainability you go anywhere and say 10 rupees down 20 rupees down nobody can buy from you because in the world today people talk about quality the manager who sits he wants to buy at least four five products and reduce the number of vendors that is the attitude of the multinationals and big companies today people are fed up on china and people always want new model he is ready to give a good product with a big basket so yeah the multinational industry is good and it's a picture and thing way for that understood so uh, so uh, i so would be uh, okay sir i request you to come back for follow up question just one last question uh to the relationship with the Sorry client to, sir but i request you to come back for a follow up question all right thank you the next question is from the line of abdul sheikh from m3 investments please go ahead uh am i audible Yes, you are audible. Uh, yes, you are audible. Man. Good morning, ma'am, and congratulations, ma'am, for the good startup number. So, I have a, a three question. Uh, first one is how much revenue we have generated? We have generated from regulated mar- market from this financial year. And second one is about like how much uh, we uh, how much is revenue we have come can uh, we have generated from top three APIs. top 5 apis and top 10 apis and that's all uh so thank you for the question uh in terms of the uh, revenue share uh just to give you a little background 80% of our revenue is generated through exports and only 20% is from domestic markets and in this 80% also about 50% is coming in from a uh, regulated market uh if you see for regulated markets our share has gone up uh, in europe also from 33% to almost 41% uh the other markets like north america latin america uh, they are stable uh, and in fact in the next couple of quarters you will see that the share of these markets will also go up so that's far as far as you know the uh, revenue contribution from the regulated markets uh then for the top product uh, it will not be possible for us to uh, you know say uh, what would be the revenue of the top 3 or top 5 but we are consistently working on adding new products into the basket so that the revenue is more diversified uh, of course we will continue to have leadership position for some molecules uh, but overall we are working on de-risking the portfolio so that the revenue generation is more diversified okay okay but uh, as you mentioned in previous years and previous quarter You said you uh, uh, your top three product uh, like uh, gen- uh, contribution is around forty four to forty five percent. So, is it the same thing or uh, what? Yeah. So currently it is uh, almost similar. Uh, but going forward, you will definitely see as the new products and new opportunities uh, grow. Uh, this con- I mean, of course, the top three products are also growing. They are not de growing products. uh but the revenue generation and their contribution to the total revenue will go on decreasing as the new products and the new opportunities kick in yeah okay okay and uh, how much in revenue is generated from top 3 customers so you have uh, like numbers can you please share us we don't discuss anything on uh, what you call customer specific or product specific in a in a open forum uh, I, i hope you understand okay 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 got it got it and i want to know about there is only uh, 11% growth in your quarter and quarter basis so could you please uh, give me uh, like why why this growth is like only 11% i think it has already been discussed see we have told very clearly that uh, our guidance i hope uh, you are looking at our guidance also 
We said that the overall uh, revenue growth would be around 20%. I think we had grown at 23%. And we said that EBITDA we will grow by around 30%. I think uh, the overall year's uh, EBITDA is at around 30 plus percentages. Uh, uh, I don't understand. Uh, did we say anything wrong earlier which we had tracked or no? No, I don't think we have done anything like that. Uh, is there anything else you would like to understand, sir? No, no, thanks a lot. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Aditya Fain from Robo Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. Sir, in the previous call also you shared the guidance of 20% revenue growth for the following year, FI25. So, uh, will this be from the existing products and like from the existing business only, including the new products? Or uh, this includes the revenue from the Ambarnath capacity, which will get commissioned in Q2? So, no, uh, this basically guidance is on the overall blended portfolio. Uh, of course, I mean, uh, this can be higher once Ambarnath goes into complete production. Uh, but for Ambarnath to generate uh, peak revenues, it will not be possible in this financial year because only in quarter two of this financial year, the production will start. Uh, so, you know, the validation and then for the commercial production to start and for it to reach peak capacity, we are looking at uh, at least two to three years. Uh, so, this 20% plus guidance on the revenue growth uh, is on the blended portfolio. This includes our current basket of APIs, some of the new products that we are launching, uh, the CMO activities that we are doing, and of course, Ambarnath. So, as in when some of these projects kick in, uh, they definitely have a higher potential in terms of growth as well as margin also. Uh, but whenever we are giving a guidance, it's more on the conservative side on the entire blended portfolio. So, that is why we are maintaining that 20% plus revenue growth. All right. And how much is this Ambarnath uh, supposed to contribute at peak potential in the coming two three years? So, uh, that would uh, be very early to say that, you know, how much Ambarnath would contribute. But overall, the CMO, CDMO portfolio that we have, in the next three years, we anticipate that it should contribute at least 20 to 25% of our total revenue. Okay. And because uh, Ambarnath is also e meant for, uh, because Ambarnath facility is also meant for CMO, CDMO activity. So, that is just an extension and expansion of our uh, CMO capabilities. So, that's why I'm saying that the overall CMO will give us about 20 to 25% of total revenue. All right. And this uh, module E got commissioned last quarter? Uh, so, uh, module E will get commissioned uh, probably end of this month. There was a slight one month uh, delay uh, due okay. to, you know, uh, some of the other factors like the construction work getting delayed slightly because of the climatic conditions there. But it will get commissioned uh, end of this month. So, we are anticipating that by quarter two of uh, FI25, we should start commercial production. Two, two. Okay, same for same as Ambarnath, right? Same as Ambarnath. And this will also take two, three years to reach peak potential? Yes. Okay, okay. all right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nirali Shah from Ashika Stockbroking. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, I have a good question regarding our current strategy. Um, we have been focusing on expanding our portfolio for few Um Could you provide an update on our progress in this area? Specifically, I'd like to understand the key milestones we have achieved so far. Any challenges that we are facing and the next steps in our expansion plan? So, uh, like we said, uh, expansion for new products, we are now evaluating uh, newer therapies like anti-diabetic, uh, anti-anxiety. Uh, we already have a very strong presence in anesthetic uh, portfolio. So, that is another, uh, you know, basket of products that we would like to expand on. Uh, there is a lot of potential in anesthetic basket. Like our chairman said that there are a lot of products in this basket. Uh, which are purely being imported currently from China and there is a lot of dependence globally there. Uh, so, we would be one of the first manufacturers globally to develop an indigenous product in India uh, from the basic chemical. Uh, so, we are currently focusing on the backward integration for the new products what we are launching. 
uh, we expect most of these new products to be launched somewhere around quarter three of FY25. Uh, that's when you know at least we will be able to start supplying commercially to some of the non-reg uh, markets. And of course, I mean uh, the regulatory approvals will take about uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, so this is where we are in terms of the new product launches and the new the thought process behind the new uh, basket. Okay, uh, got it. That's it. Thank you. So our next question is from the line of Monica Joshi from Hornbill Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, hi guys. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. Uh, I just wanted to understand. You know, earlier we had. Uh, this bit of volatility or this is seasonality in the revenues and uh, there was this September and March which used to be kind of a little lumpy in terms of uh, revenue. But that does not seem to be the case anymore. So is that now completely ironed out? So if we see the March quarter now versus the December quarter 23, um, it's kind of flattening out. So, do you think this is now a new normal? You have achieved that kind of uh, stability in your revenue? Uh, so, Monica, to answer to your question, uh, yes. Uh, previously, there was a lot of seasonality aspect uh, to some of the major products that we were, uh, you know, where we had the leadership was the anti hysterical uh, anti allergics, where there is a definite seasonal impact. Uh, but if you have tracked the company in the last couple of quarters, we have consciously put a lot of effort of, uh, you know, growing our other basket of products in some of the regulated geographies. Uh, so that is why you will definitely see that moving forward, uh, there would be much more stable quarters. It is not completely gone. There will still be a seasonal impact because antihistamine still is a key product in our portfolio. But with some of the other products growing, uh, you will definitely see that the quarters are more stable. Got it, got it. Because, uh, you know, though it is kind of reflecting in the revenues, it is not as much reflecting in your gross margins, right? So your margins tend to uh, tend to still show that variance. So you had this bump up in um, gross margins in March, um, and that volatility continues. So how does one read... Uh, into understanding when we are projecting your numbers, how does one read into uh, understanding where this really goes? Because is that volatility likely to stay, if not in revenues, then in margins? So uh, the volatility in the margins also you will see will be uh, quite stable moving forward. The volatility is mainly happening because of certain products having a bigger reach in the regulated markets. And we have said this in the past also that regulated markets are giving better selling prices as compared to the semi-regulated markets. So wherever you know uh, the sales in those markets is higher, uh, for that particular quarter you will see that the margins are also slightly higher. But moving forward, even that I would say would, would be more stable. And we have always maintained this and we continue to maintain this moving forward also that we would like our investors to have a more long-term approach and look at the margins on an annualized basis uh, rather than quarterly basis. And on an annualized basis, 30%, uh, 28 to 30% margin is something that we are very confident of maintaining. And that is also getting reflected in the last couple of quarters numbers. So moving forward also the same guidance that please look at the margins on an annualized basis where we are very confident that 28 to 30 percent we will be able to maintain. The company definitely has potential to achieve higher than 30 percent because a lot of the new projects, the CMO opportunities come at a more premium margin. Uh, that is what we benchmark ourselves against. But 28 to 30 percent is uh, a confident number that we are very uh, assured that we will be able to maintain along with the 20 plus percent revenue growth year on year. Correct. So you're maintaining the 20% guidance, so that's about a 1,000 crores of revenues by FY27 and the 28 to 30% margin guidance. So we have cleared about that. That still stays, right? Yes, absolutely. And uh, when you uh, just miss that one small part, when you said the 25% contribution from CMO, CDMO, you were referring to the 1,000 crores. In that, you expect about 25% to come from CMO, CDMO. Is that correct? 
Uh, in the thousand crores, we anticipate about 18 to 20 percent coming in from CMO, CDMO. And in your estimate, that is definitely not margin dilutive. It is, in fact, a better margin proposition than what you are guiding at 28 to 30 percent. Yes. Got it. Got it. Thanks a lot so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dikshit Doshi from Whitestone Financial Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, some of the questions are answered. Just a couple of questions. Uh, 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 you mentioned one is our Ambarnath uh, CAPEX and uh, one more CAPEX is going on. If you can elaborate on that and how much would be CAPEX uh, amount for both uh, CAPEX? <laughs> So we are anticipating about 100 crores of capex in FY25. Uh, this will be mainly for Ambarnath as well as some part of uh, the new uh, module E which is coming up. We are also doing some de bottlenecking activities for uh, you know enhancing our current product basket capacity. Uh, so like some of the older blocks in the manufacturing facility like the B block and all we are just refurbishing to increase the capacity. Uh, so all this will be mainly for these uh, reasons, the 100 crores. And uh, at the end of this, uh, our capacity would be somewhere around 1020 KL for the Lotte side. And uh, for Ambarnath, it will be about 200 odd KL. Okay. And uh, for Ambarnath, uh, you may, uh, how much would be the total capex, including whatever we have already spent? Uh, it would be about 75 crores. Okay, and currently, what would be our broad capacity utilization? See, for the current year, we were at around 86%. See, with the e-block coming up, uh, we believe that uh, since, like what uh, Dr. Saloni has already told, that uh, we will be able to meet our uh, revenue guidance for next two to three years on the, on the existing load day facility. So I think uh, that should be the answer on the capacity utilization. And uh, also, uh, when we say 86% capacity utilization, we manufacture a lot of different products. Uh, so, at peak, what uh, what kind of utilization we can do? Can we go to 100 or 90, 95 would be? No, 100 is not at all possible. See, when you have a regular maintenance uh, schedules which needs to be taken compulsorily. See, I don't think, see, this itself is the highest optimal limit what we have touched. In fact, uh, our manufacturing teams along with our CEO, they had a lot of uh, sessions around this. And that is why, in fact, uh, we had de bottleneck most of the areas. Okay. Otherwise, uh, in a multi-product facility, anything around 75 to 80 percent itself is a, uh, what do you call a nice percentage to maintain. Okay. And one last question. Uh, in the current year, how much would be contribution from CDO, CDM, uh, CMO, CDO? We don't discuss what do you call uh, business wise or anything in any of our uh, what do you call calls. Uh, so I think this is something which we generally don't give it out. Okay, 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 fine. That's it for my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shubham Harwa from Purnata Investment Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. FY25 growth drivers. I'm taking last to hear you very deeply. Can you repeat the question? Sorry? We are not even here. Can you discuss in detail on FY25 growth drivers? Okay. Uh, so for FY25, uh, we categorize the growth drivers into three major baskets. Uh, one is uh, the existing product portfolio, what we have other than the top three products. Uh, we have a good basket of about 10, 11 products where we are currently present only in the semi-regulated market. And we have already registered these products in the regulated market. We are just waiting for the approvals to come through. Uh, so the first would be uh, the scale up of these products into the more regulated market space uh, that will not only add to the revenue, but it will also help to further improvise uh, the margins. Uh, the second one is uh, the CMO, uh, CDMO opportunities that we have. Uh, 
similar to DFT, and there are uh, at least two to three other opportunities uh, where we are at a very advanced uh, discussion, uh, where there is a fixed volume of advanced intermediates in certain cases APIs also, which we have to manufacture for certain multinationals. Uh, so those contracts will also start uh, coming in. I mean, the commercial volumes will also start kicking in. So that I would uh, say is the second area for growth. And the third uh, definitely would be the new product launches. Uh, so as we have mentioned before, we are trying to expand our existing uh, product basket. So we are adding uh, new products in the anesthetic category. In fact, four new products we are adding there. Uh, we are also adding newer therapies like anti-diabetic, uh, anti-anxiety. So these new product launches also will start adding to the revenue. So these I think would be the three major growth drivers. On the CMO, CDMO front, to talk a little bit more in detail, uh, with the Ambarna site coming up, uh, there is a possibility of us, you know, moving into forward integration also uh, for CMO uh, kind of uh, contracts. Uh, so that would be another new area for us uh, where, you know, we can get uh, more traction. And that can also really add to the revenue in the coming few years. Uh, but like you are saying, existing product and the uh, new regulated market, but uh, did we get uh, registrations and all that that has been completed or still we are waiting for that? So uh, it is an ongoing process because we are talking about 10, 11 products. There are some products where we have already received the uh, registration. Some are currently under registration. So different products are at a different stage, I would say. And uh, in CMO opportunities, which two, three opportunity you are talking about, that are in advanced stage. So that might get uh, be benefited from, I think, the second half of the year. Yes. So that some part uh, commercially might get added in FY25. Uh, but majority of the CMO revenues will start coming in other than DSM and uh, one or two which are at advanced discussion. Most of them you will see that the revenue generation will start from FY26. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nikhil from Securities Investment Management, Private Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, good morning and uh, congrats on good set of numbers. I hope I am audible. Yes, yes, you are audible. Thank you. Yeah, uh, just two questions. Uh, one is uh, on uh, this uh, uh, 1,000 crore revenue target where we are mentioning uh, 18 to 20 percent can come from CDMO. And in our previous call, we've talked about uh, two or three projects. But uh, from today where we are and the revenue which you gave for DSM, uh, what gives you the confidence that uh, this 200 crore kind of a top line can be achieved? Like, uh, if you can just talk, probably not uh, quantitatively but qualitatively, what is the kind of uh, uh, interest you are uh, getting from customers or some sense to build a confidence on what is building this uh, 200 crores? Uh, so basically, <laughs> the existing market uh, as well as the new product, we are very confident because uh, like our chairman said, we have taken a very different approach for adding new products in the basket. It is very strategic where uh, global dependence on China is there for certain products. Uh, so there, you know, customers are desperately looking for a, a alternative source. And we have tried to capitalize on that aspect. Uh, we have a lot of strength when it comes to R&D and developing the product. And backward integration, as you know, has been a key strength of the company for a very, very long time. Uh, so all these products which we have been able to newly infuse into the basket, we have been able to completely backward integrate those and get the manufacturing process done completely in India. So indigenous products we have been able to develop. Uh, where we are very confident that the kind of uh, costing that we are able to get for the product now, uh, we are able to compete on a global scale with the Chinese manufacturers. So there is a lot of confidence there when it comes to our existing basket, of course, and the new products that we have infused. On the CMO front also, uh, you know, we are giving 20 cents, we will be able to pay uh, by the end of FI27. 
देर इज अ फेयर लेवल ऑफ कॉन्फिडेंस बिकॉज टू थ्री ऑपर्चुनिटीज इन दिस लाइक आई सेट आर आर अ वेरी एडवांस स्टेज वेर वी हैव ऑलरेडी सप्लाइड द वैलिडेशन बैचेज टू देम and commercial production will start any time so there is a volume commitment which we have already received from these customers and contracts have been signed that you know in the next 2 to 3 years these are the kind of volumes that they will buy from us and these are binding contracts so there is a fair level of confidence that yes in the next 2 to 3 years uh, most of these cmo opportunities we will be able to scale up uh, to that extent okay so uh okay i got it so in conclusion would it be right to say that these are projects we've been working for last one year and now everything is uh, done largely it's uh, validation and uh, once once customer approvals come they will get commercialized so largely yes, the r&d and everything is already done on those yes absolutely these are the products and projects which we have been working uh, which have been in the pipeline for over a year now and now most of these projects on the cmo front as well as even the new product launches which we are planning to do in this year uh, we are at a very advanced uh, you know stage of discussion with all the customers wherein they are just waiting for our validations to be completed and for us to start the commercial supply so that is why there is a very uh, you know good level of confidence i would say that you know uh, the 1000 crores with the kind of margins we are committing we will be able to achieve that in fact if anything like i have said in the past also we have achieved higher margins as well as higher revenue in the past so there is a lot of opportunity for us that once all the cmo uh, kicks in the ambarnath project also kicks in we can definitely do even better than what uh, these numbers are okay and just an extension here saloni see uh, what we are hearing from lot of companies is that a lot of interest for cdmo cmo projects towards india because of this china plus one uh, not specifically but if you have to understand uh, the kind of uh, uh, projects we are working at the r&d versus what we were doing say one or two years back how is that kind of pipeline uh, build up for us today because the pipeline which we are working today will probably fructify in next 2 3 years so if you can talk about how the pipeline scaling up and how the kind of inquiry levels we are working with also definitely that china plus one strategy has benefited a lot of companies and we are also one of those companies who is focusing on that uh, like our chairman said our pipeline is also uh, you know focusing on that area only uh the four five products which we plan to launch uh, you know we would be one of the first manufacturers in india or globally to have a completely backward integrated product other than china uh so that is one key area where we are focusing we are also trying to complement that with our existing therapies uh, for example anesthetic basket is one area where we are aggressively working uh, in our r&d we have four products currently in this anesthetic basket uh we already have a very strong presence globally in our anesthetic products uh, you know we are global leaders in some of the products so we also wanted to build on that capability and also have a backward integrated product which would compete with china so you will see in the next couple of months we will be launching four products where there is only dependence of on china globally for the api and a lot of the larger companies are very interested and in fact some of the discussions are already at an advanced stage where they have told us you know this is the volume that we are currently buying from china which we would completely like to move to uh, you so most of them are at a very advanced discussion and the r&d pipeline is also in that way so main focus is on anesthetics uh, anti diabetics because that's a new therapy for us uh, where we have been able to uh, you know develop a product which is fully backward integrated where again there is a lot of dependence on china today and then anti anxiety where we already have some strength because we already are catering to customers globally for these therapies so they wanted us to add certain more products so this is how the r&d basket is developing okay and uh, last question uh, Sorry, see uh, once our... i request you to come back okay fine i'll come back thank you ladies and gentlemen you may press star and one to ask a question The next question is from the line of Ashwini Agarwal from Dimitar Advisors LLP. Please go ahead. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Saloni and team. Uh, quick question: 
on uh, the new products, uh, you know, that Oral Blue and uh, the the gauze uh, products that you've been kind of studying, new chemical entities, if I may call them, uh, is there any updates that you can share on those? Uh, for the new products, uh, like I said, we are now uh, through R&D. Uh, we are actually now at the validation phase because uh, we anticipate that this newer basket of anesthetic products can... Uh, just one second. Uh, sorry, uh, what are you asking about the patented products uh, uh, or I mean, the cancer detection kit and the well? Yes, yes. I was talking about that cancer detection okay. new product and okay. that, okay. you know, the, the other the, that you have the artificial skin uh, for burns uh, that you, you guys have, have, the, uh, have been working on in clinical uh, trial, etc. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry, I didn't understand the question earlier. Uh, both the projects are moving really well. Uh, first, our focus is on the cancer detection kit. Uh, we have already, I mean, the clinical trials will begin very soon. Uh, we have already identified a partner who is going to support us with the clinical trials. Uh, already in India, the patent has been filed. We are also looking at neighboring geographies uh, like certain Southeast Asian countries like Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, from where we are also getting a lot of interest from the big formulation companies there uh, where they want to, you know, uh, put the patent and they also want to partner with us on this technology. So the oral cancer uh, kit is moving really well. Uh, we anticipate that in another two years, uh, we will be ready with the final product and the product can be launched in the market uh, because that is how much time it will take for the clinical trials and everything to be completed. Uh, the gel also, yes, it is moving uh, fairly well, but for us, the first launch will be the oral uh, cancer detection kit, uh, then followed by the gel heat. Okay, thanks. And uh, you mentioned, and uh, maybe I heard it incorrectly, and I'm not very sure, you mentioned that the DSM is 25 to 30 tons of supply is anticipated in 25 to 3. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, we are anticipating about 20 to 25 metric tons of material uh, supply to DSM in FI25. And what would that revenue number be? Actually, uh, DS, DSM contract at its peak would be somewhere around uh, 60 to 70 crores uh, on the top line, Ashwini. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you so much. All the best. And I look forward to seeing you back. Yep. Thank Thanks, you very Ashwini. much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ketan Chera, a retail investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, I'd like to know, um, uh, with respect to the U.S., uh, this year, uh, how much uh, would be the revenue? Uh, because if I see the last year versus uh, this uh, FY24, our revenues have slightly decreased. So, um, any um, any outlook that uh, you can give uh, where we would be in terms of uh, U.S. revenue directionally, not not any guidance, but directionally. Uh, the U.S. has been quite we have also said in past that in the current portfolio, what we have inherited is the larger market free products has been the European region and the Latin region. But there are a lot of new products which we are registering in the US uh, where they have good potential. Uh, products like dextromethorphan, allopurinol, tramadol. Uh, you know, these products have very good potential in the U.S. market and we are already started registering. If you see, we have about uh, 15 uh, U.S. DMS filed as of now. Uh, so, in the next uh, few quarters, in fact, for this financial year also, we are anticipating that the contribution from uh, U.S. would be uh, slightly higher than what it is today. Europe will still remain, at least for the next uh, two years, Europe will still remain our major market, but definitely U.S. will improve. Okay, uh, thank you for that. And uh, the second question is uh, in respect to the uh, concentration. Uh, now, when I say concentration, uh, it is with respect to the customers as well as uh, your key therapeutic areas. In both of these, um, uh, we have uh, not uh, seen a significant uh, reduction uh, in terms of concentration. Like, you know, 49% uh, uh, revenues are coming from top 10 clients. 
and uh, uh, analgesic uh, anesthetic uh, therapy is contributing about 46% uh, to the to overall revenue. So, uh, again, um, what, what would be our plan to kind of reduce the concentration both on the customer side as well as on the um, uh, therapeutic, uh, therapeutic side? So, on the customer side, definitely as some of the other products in the basket, uh, you know, therapies like antihypertensive, vitamins, uh, then, you know, these as some of these products grow, automatically you will see that the cons uh, customer and the geographic concentration will reduce uh, because it will be a more distributed portfolio. In terms of therapies, uh, see, in the anesthetic basket also we have a lot of products. It's not only one product, you know, where uh, we are driving the revenues. There are a few products in that basket. So therapy-wise also we are adding new therapies like anti-diabetic we are adding now, anti-anxiety we are adding now. Uh, anesthetic basket also we are adding but new products so you know the customer base would be new the geographies would be new uh, so this is how we are trying to de-risk the portfolio as well as the therapy customer concentration by adding new products which would scale up in different geographies okay and last question uh, on slide 17 uh, you mentioned that um, uh, there are some uh, anesthetic therapy uh, three and projects and uh, another and projects for uh, anti-hypertensive and vitamins so, um, when we see, uh, uh, when I see these uh, ANDA projects mentioned here, uh, is it that, you know, we are working on um, uh, only APIs or intermediates or these will be formulations uh, part of the CMO, CDMO uh, projects? So it should be for uh, APIs first and uh, for certain of our existing uh, therapy products, we might uh, do some forward integration on Sambarnath is up and running. So that would be our own formulations, is that correct? No, uh, that would be only for a CMO opportunities. Okay, okay. Thank you so much for answering my questions. Wish me the best. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question. On behalf of Supriya Life Science Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now discuss your lives. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining.